This is 7 National News and in our top story. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has affirmed that the UAE people's interaction and response with the Thank You Our Armed Forces campaign underscored the true spirit, great love and the close ties connecting the people and their armed forces. In a statement marking the conclusion of the national initiative, His Highness stated that our army is strong with its ordinance, gallant with its high morale and always remains alert and that the relationship between our armed forces and the people is one of love, thankfulness and gratitude. His Highness praised the overwhelming response he sensed from children and adults and the deep sentiments expressed by the UAE people over the past few days towards the UAE Armed Forces in a campaign that has captured the attention of the people within the UAE and abroad. The ruler of Dubai had dedicated his accession day to thank the UAE Armed Forces and invited everyone to join the celebrations. He also invited the entire nation to join in and show its gratitude towards the Armed Forces through a hashtag in Arabic that translates as Guardians of the Nation, which has gone viral on the social media attracting more than 90 million viewers. Over the six-day campaign, the hashtag drew more than 190,000 users on Twitter and over 7,000 videos and photos on Instagram at an average of 1,000 videos a day. The Abu Dhabi government has announced a list of public holidays planned for 2015. Although the list of holidays was released only on the Abu Dhabi government website, most other Emirates tend to follow a similar schedule. The announcement stated that the official reference to determine Islamic occasions such as the beginning of Ramadan or Hajj is the Hijri calendar, which is based on the faces of the moon. Accordingly, the exact dates of Islamic events vary from one Gregorian year to another as they depend on the local sightings of the moon. Public sector workers in the UAE can expect at least 11 more days of public holidays in 2015 with, with all federal ministries, public departments and institutions to be closed on May 16 for Isra and Mehraj night, June 18 for the expected beginning of Ramadan, July 17 for Eid al-Fitr, September 14 for Hajj season to September 22, Arafat day, September 23 Eid al-Adha, October 15 Hijri New Year and December 2nd and 3rd for the UAE National Day. According to the announcement, the UAE National Day holiday will be two days, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha will be three days, and the others will be one day. Dubai Cares is calling on all UAE residents to help pack for charity this weekend in aid of hundreds of thousands of children left traumatized by Israel's 50-day war on Gaza. Three months ago, Dubai Cares launched an 11 million dirham program to build a new school in Gaza and introduce emergency trauma education to the curriculum. During the, seven, during the seven week summer war, over 2,000 Palestinians have been killed. Around 6,000 homes have been destroyed, saw 138 schools bombed, and 1,500 young people orphaned, bringing the number of children requiring psychological support to 373,000, according to the United Nations. While the plans to help the children won't be fully implemented until 2016, Dubai Cares is urging UAE residents to volunteer their time this weekend to pack 50,000 school bags for Palestinian children. This aims to integrate Gaza youngsters back into school and create an environment suitable for learning. The event will take place on Thursday from 10 a.m. at Al Boom Tourist Village between Dubai Creek Park and Al Karhud Bridge. The campaign will continue until 6 p.m. every day until the 11th of January with refreshments and lunch provided. Donations are also welcome. The Ministry of Education has revealed that over 1,600 pupils have dropped out of public schools across the UAE during 2013-14. According to local reports, the majority of them are girls. 1,198 female students left school compared with 460 boys. In addition, figures revealed that 3,764 pupils, of which 2,630 were boys and 1,134 girls, failed a year and had to repeat, majority of them in high school. Out of the 1,183 high school dropouts included 815 girls and 368 boys. Meanwhile, students repeating a year saw more boys with a total of 1,579 compared with 667 girls. And in the second cycle, it was 1,051 boys and 467 girls. These numbers are in contrast to previous years, where the majority of school leavers were boys by as much as 20% in one year. 
A Knowledge and Human Development Authority study in 2011 connects the high percentage of male dropouts with the low quality of education in public schools, leading to a lack of desire to learn and eventually detachment from schools. Last year, the UAE spent 66 billion dirhams on healthcare, which is 10% more compared with 2013. With healthcare investments on the rise, experts say residents in the UAE and across the region stand to benefit. This will be reflected at the upcoming 40th edition of Arab Health, which will take place from the 26th to the 29th of January 2015. It is considered the second largest annual healthcare congress and exhibition in the world and the largest in the Middle East. Arab Health Director Dave Panther says the event will gather international and regional medical practitioners together with leading manufacturers, wholesalers, dealers and distributors to network and exchange best practices. This year's event will host 4,000 exhibitors and new country pavilions from Bahrain, Philippines and Thailand, which reflects the growing Asian market. Generally, we're seeing uh, companies who are developing medical devices who are exhibiting and finding that they are able to supply to hospitals and to uh, distributors in the, in the region. But obviously, we are also seeing an increase of a Asian hospital groups who are coming over to, uh, to, to be part of the, the GCC healthcare market in Dubai in particular. Uh, they may partner with local, um, lo local hospitals and manage those hospitals and then they can also provide links to their own hospitals in Thailand or Singapore and so, et cetera. Collier's uh, International that we're going to need an extra 1,500 hospital beds. Uh, so this is going to contribute to an extra 1.5 million US dollars, sorry, 1.5 billion US dollar spend over the next six years. In addition, Panther says international speakers will cover a broad spectrum of medical specialities and disciplines. The Arab Health Congress, which will run alongside the event, will engage over 10,000 delegates from around the world. It will have 18 conference programs dedicated to various topics, including the future of surgery centres. And for the first time, it will also have a conference focused on hypertension. Hypertension is a contributory disease to a number of other problems, such as coronary heart disease, diabetes. It's also a factor in obesity, etc. So the fact that we're focusing on hypertension, it's looking at how to treat patients with hypertension. For Arab Health, because of the clinical focus, we're looking at more traditional surgical techniques, and we're bringing together some of the key surgery companies who are focusing on some very specialized um, procedures, such as bloodless surgery from Johnson & Johnson, surgical navigation from uh, Medtronic and Carl Storz are showing, showcasing their um, the visualization techniques. They're obviously helping surgeons to, to treat patients more effectively, more simply, and obviously the patient um, treatment and recovery times become a lot, uh, a lot smaller as well. I mean, obviously we're looking at the likes of bariatric surgery where there's a, a high increase of obesity. Um, so in the region that's something that's very important to, to try to combat. Uh, we're also looking at different pediatric surgery, um, different specialised, so there'll be more specialised surgery centres. I think the aim is as well is to treat patients as much as possible as outpatients. So the endoscopic procedures where they can go in for the day, they're treated under more of a local anaesthetic and then they're out by the end of the day, uh, means that the, uh, the time of spent in hospital and recovery time is, is a lot quicker. The Public Transport Agency of the Roads and Transport Authority has launched a campaign to combat illegal taxis in Dubai. The Sahar campaign to combat the illegal transportation of passengers in the Emirate has been launched in collaboration with the General HQ of the Dubai Police and is part of moves in the Emirate to eradicate the outlawed activity. According to a report by Emirates News Agency WAM, Abdullah Al Mahra, the Director of Franchising and Enforcement at the RTA's Public Transport Agency, was quoted as saying that the illegal picking up of passengers is practiced in certain spots, which are well known to those who practice this activity. He added that randomly it will take place on a street side, but the pickup points keep changing to avoid being raided, making it difficult to quantify the exact magnitude of the practice, as it involves several types of vehicles, such as private vehicles, rented cars, commercial transport vehicles and private company vehicles. Al Mahra said that the illegal practice has negative financial repercussions for Dubai's transport sector and distorts the profile of the RTA, which seeks to deliver best in class services. And finally, in the bulletin. For the entire month of January, from today, more than 1,000 images and videos of people's experiences of Dubai will be shown on a large LED screen installed next to the Dubai fountain in front of Burj Khalifa. This marks and celebrates the first year anniversary of Hashtag My Dubai. 
The initiative was launched a year ago with an invite for residents and visitors to share their experiences of Dubai and create the world's first autobiography of his city. More than 2.5 million images and videos have been shared with the hashtag since. More than 1,650 images and videos were chosen to be displayed on the official Instagram account at MyDubai, also known as the hashtag MyDubai eMuseum. From February onwards, the hashtag MyDubai screen will become a live social wall that will showcase images and stories in re near real time, providing the opportunity for more contributors to hashtag MyDubai and have the stories shared to millions of people. A selection of contributions are also displayed on the official Facebook account, which additionally exhibits a number of films made about Dubai by locally based filmmakers.